Well, a good Sunday afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist John Dawson. This is Beryl. It is a major hurricane category four in size and strength, and it is headed to the Caribbean. It's going to be the main focus at what we talk about. But a quick reminder, if you are thinking about preparations for this year, and I hope that you are because you never know where these things are going to end up. Here is Beryl, and Beryl is going to be a major concern for most of the Caribbean right now. And if you're in the Gulf Coast, particularly Texas, Louisiana, it's something that we're watching. We're not overly excited at this point because most indications are that it will be staying to our south. But we are going to be making sure that this thing is going to do what it's expected to do. Let me put it that way for sure. Here's all the 4 p.m. stats here going through it real quick. Um, the movement is at about 18 miles an hour to the west northwest. So fairly moving fairly quickly. That pressure 960 and then those max winds at 130 miles an hour right now. And I've mentioned this is the 4 p.m. Sunday afternoon update as we expect this system to stay at at least category four in strength as it officially passes the Windward Islands and into the Caribbean. And then it becomes a little less favorable overall conditions once it gets into the central Caribbean and then moreover even to the west. It's going to be inter interacting with a little bit of wind shear. Now, how much wind shear and how much that's going to impact it, it's not crystal clear on that point, but it does look like at least maybe we can get this thing to slow down a little bit from its growth uh, and continue to maybe even weaken a little bit. And that's the current plan from the National Hurricane Center. When we get to Tuesday, it looks like these winds will drop down to back to a category three. That's still a major hurricane and then possibly even weaken a little bit more as it gets closer into Jamaica. So right now the Hurricane Center has that as a cat two as it brushes just to the south of Jamaica. And again, remember our forecast cone. I've got a line here in the middle representing where it thinks this where we where the forecast has the center of that circulation. This is not an impact cone. This is really anywhere that that center of circulation could end up. So it could certainly cross right over the top of Jamaica. The impacts will be much wider than what this cone is showing right now. And then we continue to take this out even a little bit further. And this ends up impacting the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, and that's when we get into Thursday and into Friday. And then, of course, you know, when you're this far out, there's a, obviously low confidence, more questions than anything else about where this system would be heading. At the moment, though, it does look like it would continue to stay headed sort of south and into Mexico. I've got the future cast here that we're going to look at in just a moment, and you'll see that. But this is, again, kind of what we are looking for at the moment. So there's quite a bit of sort of sort of history that comes along with this storm. Uh, the earliest major hurricanes to form. So Beryl is going to be one of considered up in there with one of them. Uh, it, it, get in, it happened in June 30th. In June 8th, Alma, that's back in 1960. 66 formed and Hurricane Dennis on July 8th of 2025 is the earliest category four on record. So now that we see barrel at that category four strength, uh, we will be uh, classifying that one as the earliest occurring, the earliest category four hurricane in June instead of in July is kind of what we've got happening with barrel. I showed you some of these steering currents yesterday. Nothing major has changed, and this is one of the reasons why barrel is expected to stay fairly low in the latitudes. In other words, staying into the Caribbean and not curving up and into the Atlantic like sometimes we would see systems do. What's going on in the Atlantic right now with Hurricane Barrel is nothing short of historic and unprecedented. And you know me, I do not use either of those words lightly. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to talk much more on why it is historic and why it's unprecedented later in the video. But I do want to give the best information that I can give to our friends in the Windward Islands tonight and throughout the rest of the Caribbean when it comes to Barrel. So we're going to break that down and go through it pretty slow. All right, so just looking at this, you 
you would not think that this is a June hurricane. This certainly has the August or September look. It is a very healthy looking hurricane, unfortunately. Again, this is the visible satellite. I wanted to show you that because it, you can see the ripples in here and just see how well defined this storm is. We're losing the daylight in this part of the Atlantic, and that is why we're getting things to fade off a little bit. But again, this is going to be the last couple of hours of visible satellite. It does look like in the last couple of uh, frames here, the eye is trying to get a little bigger. Maybe it's wrapped in some dry air, or maybe it's going to go through one of its eye wall replacement cycles, which again, it breaks down its eye wall, and then it kind of builds back a bigger, stronger one. So hopefully the second part is not the case. But nonetheless, there it is getting closer to uh, the island of Barbados. It looks to be right now the center of the storm is going to pass south of Barbados, but impacts are still coming. And I'm going to try to show you those impacts kind of island by island here over the course of the next however long we're talking. It's going to be a long video today. I'm going to have the chapters in the description so that you can easily navigate if you're not interested in part of uh, the video. I know your time is valuable, and I know especially for watching from the Caribbean, uh, you have a lot of stuff to do to get ready, and we are certainly thinking about you guys uh, in the in as you're out ahead of this. So here is the timeline, and things are going to start to go downhill for uh, the island of Barbados, and then the southern end of the Windward Islands, really Grenada, Saint Vincent, and the Grenadines, Saint Lucia. This is going to be these are the islands that I am most concerned with. You see, the cone is getting. It's, it's shrinking a little bit. It's getting a little more narrow. That indicates, again, the forecast accuracy is going up. But really, from about St. Lucia through St. Vincent and the Grenadines into Grenada, that is where I am most concerned at this point. Still going to likely have some tropical storm impacts from Martinique and then into the island of Barbados. I'll show you that in just one second. But for the rest of... Uh, let's go back to the actual track there. I, I went through. That is a satellite image of Florida. Uh, we're going to go back to the actual track of this, and we're going to see where we have to watch further down the line. Uh, getting pretty close to the Dominican Republic in Haiti, we're going to be watching this closely for the south end here. Some modeling does want to bring it very, very close to the island, and then right on through Jamaica. So again, this is going to be a couple day heads up. We've been talking about you guys in Jamaica for the last couple of days as well, and unfortunately, not much has changed in terms of the trajectory, so we need to make sure that we are getting our preps in order for a major hurricane, either very close or a direct hit to the island of Jamaica there. You see a Category 3 hurricane, that's going to be on Wednesday morning, 120 mile per hour storm, and then eventually as we get Get into the Yucatan Peninsula and then into Belize. Belize, we are in the cone parts of uh, Central America as well into Guatemala. There we go. So again, the cone represents where the center could go. So the center, if it takes a southerly track, could be right here. And then we're really looking at the impacts all around the storm. 